Welcome to the Loud and Clear Podcast, a show dedicated to amplifying the voices of women in music. I am your host, Olivia Adams, and you are joining us on week two of our series talking about different composers who happen to be women. We are learning a bit more about their history, their musical styles, and their contributions to the scene of music. My hope is that through this podcast series, you will deepen your knowledge about some composers and learn about composers who are new to you. You can jump in at any point in this series. You don't have to start at week one. I do want to put a small disclaimer on this episode by saying that these are not meant to be in-depth, comprehensive biographies to the life and music of each composer, but to give you an overview of their life, a taste of their music, and some resources to help you go deeper, should you like to do that. I also wanted to structure this episode in such a way that you could share it with your teenage music students to supplement their music history or perhaps learn more about the composer if they are learning a piece by them. Today's featured composer is Dana Suisse. Dana Suisse was an American musician, composer, and lyricist or librettist and influential in the Tin Pan Alley vaudeville scene in the 1930s. I was first introduced to the music of Dana Suisse when attending a recital in my undergraduate degree in 2018. Pianist Sarah Davis Bickner performed Suisse's set titled The Cocktail Suite, which had different movements named after famous cocktails. It was a dazzling set, and I was in love with the beautiful textures and harmonies. It was its own unique hybrid of jazz and classical piano music, and I loved it. And thus, I set out to learn more about this brilliant composer. Most of the research on Suisse that I've read is written by Sarah Davis Buchner, who edited and wrote the foreword to the collection of Suisse's piano music published through Dover. And I will have that linked below. In addition, I also want to thank the research of Pamela Rose, who did a whole section on women in blues. And you can check out her channel on the show links below. Other information that I found on Dana Suisse was often pulled from previous recordings of her interviews, her show conversations, and some previous recordings of her work. Nadine Dana Suisse was born December 3rd, 1909 in Kansas City, Missouri. She lived with her mother, Nina Courier Suisse, and not much is written about her father, who was likely not in the picture. Nina added the E to the end of the family name to make it francophone. And once she did, Nadine Dana Suisse became simply Dana Suisse. Dana began studying the piano from a very young age. The lore is that she grew too tall to dance ballet and therefore she set her sights on the piano. She was an accomplished pianist and Nina Suisse nurtured her daughter's musical interests. In addition to piano, she was a dancer, she did poetry recitations, and played the organ in order to round out her interests. In 1919, at the age of 10, Dana played her first piano recital as the student of Gertrude Cancanon in Drexel Hall, where she played works by Cécile Chaminade, Edward McDowell, Edvard Grieg, and Sergei Rachmaninoff. If there was any guess as to whether or not this young pianist was a phenomenon, the papers described her recital as crashing and hypnotic, with a certain dash and brilliancy. Dana was a prodigy, and her musical talents were fostered and put on display at any opportunity. Reflecting back on her childhood, Suisse remarked, There is only one thing worse than being an only child, and that is being an only child that is also a child prodigy. Your peers consider you some kind of freak and hate you when their mothers goad them to practice the piano. In 1923, at the age of 14, Suisse was featured on a radio station as Missouri's youngest composer and played her own compositions for the listening audience. Nina Suisse exposed Dana to the vaudeville show world, as well as numerous plays and shows touring the Midwest. It was not long before Dana was also playing in these vaudeville shows. Her party trick was asking the audience for a theme and then improvising on that theme. Pamela Rose wrote that she was a, quote, regular vaudeville Mozart, end quote. It is noted that she spent little of her life doing what we would consider normal childhood things, like playing with other children. Much of her time was spent in solitude, composing and practicing or touring. She was, however, extremely involved in her high school arts programs, writing her own plays, performing Shakespeare, and designing props for sets. In 1926, after Dana graduated high school, her and her mother left Kansas City so that Dana could pursue the arts in a large 
larger cultural center, heading first to Chicago, and then to Philadelphia, and finally settling in New York City. The two of them used Dana's vaudeville funds to help support their new life in New York. They lived in Greenwich Village, and while in New York, she studied piano with Alexander Soloti, one of the pupils of Franz Liszt and Sergei Rachmaninoff. She also studied composition with Ruben Goldmark, whose students were also Aaron Copeland and George Gershwin. So this is a little bit of the background on the publishing industry and how Suisse got into music sales. When Dana and her mother were making their way to New York, they had stopped into Chicago to meet Bogulowski, who taught at the Chicago Musical College, who then introduced Dana to Herbert Witherspoon, a vocal instructor. And it was Herbert who introduced Dana to Shermer Music Company, a connection that would become very influential in Dana's later years becoming a published composer. I've heard it said that you're only three people away from anyone in the world. I've also heard it said that a lot of success depends on luck. It is right place, right time, and happy circumstance that connect people. That couldn't be more true for the career of Dana Suisse. While yes, she had the talent and the skill and the education, what escalated her career were the people that she met along the way. Suisse had the most success with her jazz and vaudeville style compositions. She desired to write classical style concert works, but had significant trouble getting them picked up by publishers. It was after consistent rejection that she tried her hand at writing the popular Tin Pan Alley music of the time. And thus we see Suisse, the jazz composer, emerge. In January of 1927, at the age of 18, Dana copyrighted her first song, I Want the World for You, which was a piece that she co-wrote with songwriter and radio producer Ethel Park Richardson. Because the radio and recording industry was obviously not what it is today, it was through the success of sheet music sales that one could judge the success of a piece of music. And as talking pictures became popular, film production companies bought music publishing houses in order to secure the rights to the music and cross-promote their films by producing sheet music. This model of publishing still exists today. Warner Brothers still owns the music rights and produces many collections of books coming out of their movies. Another indicator of the success of a song was the number of records it sold. When Bing Crosby recorded Ho Hum and Whistling in the Dark, two of Dana Suisse's most famous works, the records sold 400,000 copies and 600,000 copies, respectively, within a month. So a little side note, you heard me reference the phrase Tin Pan Alley, and you may be wondering, what is that? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Tin Pan Alley was a genre of music that was popular in New York City. Carolyn J. Cooper writes that the genre took its name from the by name of a street on which the industry was based, being on 28th Street between 5th Avenue and Broadway in the early 20th century, around Broadway and 32nd Street in the 1920s, and ultimately on Broadway between 42nd and 50th Streets. The phrase Tin Pan referred to the sound of pianos furiously pounded by the so-called song pluggers who demonstrated tunes to publishers. Tin Pan Alley comprised the commercial music of songwriters of ballads, dance music, and vaudeville, and its name eventually became synonymous with American popular music in general. When these genres first became prominent, the most profitable commercial product of Tin Pan Alley was sheet music for home consumption, and songwriters, lyricists, and popular performers labored to produce music to meet the demand. Okay, back to where we left off. Dana Suisse took to composing so feverishly that she was reported to have composed in her bed, having sheets of music dropping down in a veritable waterfall of musical output. Or so says Pamela Rose. Her first published instrumental piece was the syncopated love song that premiered as a piano piece and then was transcribed for orchestras and wind bands. Here is a sneak peek of the performance by Sarah Davis Bickner.
In that brief clip you just heard, you can sense the improvisatory style that Suisse wrote in. Her music sounds like the introduction you might hear accompany a jazz singer or an instrument, but everything in this case is notated. The piece was recorded by Nathaniel Shilkret a year after being written, and Leo Robin then added words and it rose to fame as the song have you forgotten? That same year, at age 20, Dana Suisse wrote some of her most famous songs and pieces, such as Whistling in the Dark with Alan Barretts, Ho Hum with Edward Heyman, and her jazz nocturne for piano, which had lyrics added to it by Edward Heyman and became My Silent Love, one of her most famous songs. You could find Dana Suisse writing for Broadway shows and cabaret. One of her more famous songs was The Night is Young and You're So Beautiful. This clip that I'm about to play for you is sung by Saide Rajabzadeh. Let's have a listen. The night is Dana Suisse rose to the top of the musical leaderboard in her early 20s. In 1933, her and her songwriting collaborator, Edward Heyman, were asked to appear in a film series for Paramount about the New York music scene. Here is a clip of the two of them collaborating together on that set. First, we're going to do Ho Hum for you. Ho Hum, bring us here now. Ho Hum, the skies are very clear now. Ho Hum, love is near now for you and me. Ho Hum, lazy weather. Ho Hum, feeling like a feather. Ho Hum, we're together. And so, Ho Hum. Dana Suisse recalled that while filming, they had her remove her glasses and put on false eyelashes. Because of this, she had trouble seeing and even walked into a mirror trying to find the soundstage to record at. During the same filming session, the producers asked Dana and Edward to perform My Darling. It was a song that Edward had written, but Dana had never played it. So she did what she did best, and she improvised. This was the first and last time that the two appeared on screen together. But to commemorate that memory, the two of them wrote the song you ought to be in pictures that became an anthem of sorts in Hollywood being played in numerous Warner Brother films and cartoons. While the Great Depression continued to affect the world, Dana was a part of the group that took it upon themselves to entertain the world and entertain she did. She continued to write hit after hit for singers such as Billy Rose, Bing Crosby, Edward Heyman. Her music was used in Paramount Productions and her Jazz Nocturne was even the title piece in the 1931 ballet titled Jazz Nocturne. And in 1932, Dana performed Jazz Nocturne with the Capitol Theatre Symphony Orchestra. Her song, My Silent Love, was even included in the well-known 1954 film, Sabrina. In 1932, Dana was sent to Chicago to play some of her music for Paul Whiteman, a musician specializing in cross-genre music who programmed the premiere of George Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue. Dana writes, My publisher, Larry Spire, said, We're going to send you to Chicago to play something for Paul Whiteman. He's giving his Carnegie Hall concert soon. So I locked myself in my apartment and wouldn't see anybody for 10 days. I wrote the concerto in three rhythms. It has three different styles blending together. First, there's the foxtrot. Basically, it's a sonata. Then there is the blues style. Basically, an adagio. Finally, there is a jazz or the Italian fugue. You can imagine how I rushed to get through it in 10 days, and it takes 20 minutes or so to play. So that excerpt is giving me a little bit of Handel's Messiah vibes in which he wrote it in something like 24 days, and it became his title work. This was not unlike 
what Dana Suisse did. And she wrote her concerto in, in 10 days. It was 20 minutes and it became probably her biggest piano hit. Dana premiered her own composition, feverishly practicing until the wee hours of the morning on top of her regular compositional work during the day. In order to promote Whiteman's Carnegie Hall program, George Gershwin, Dana Suisse, and Paul Whiteman posed for publicity photos. And this is when the media began to dub her as the girl Gershwin. Now, Suisse, having a successful career in cabaret, film, and jazz composition, she became colleagues with many well-known musicians in the industry, such as Bing Crosby, who recorded some of her songs, Gershwin, who is a contemporary of hers, and the newspapers, because of this, called her the Girl Gershwin, which became synonymous with her name in the industry so often that they often didn't refer to her by her name in the media. Different sources said that she earned the name. In fact, I read this so many places, but I don't believe that that is a fair assumption. We wouldn't call Gershwin the boy Dana Suisse, but as so often happens to famous women, they become associated with that of a man's career. Suisse was a financially independent, successful career woman in the industry, and this was no small feat, especially in the mid-1900s. She sometimes lamented that she wasn't taken seriously as a composer because she desperately wanted to be known for her classical style. But in order to make a living, she found that writing popular music and participating in the Tin Pan Alley and Broadway or vaudeville scenes was the most financially lucrative for her career. This next excerpt that I'm going to read for you was from a 1932 newspaper profile on Dana Suisse, and it was written by Martha Dreblett. It says, quote, No one wants to publish concert music by an unknown, said Miss Suisse, who is slim and tanned and who speaks very rapidly with an almost disconcerting air of knowing what it's all about. There's a lot of glory and fame in being a serious composer, but no money. Well, I have to earn my living, and I want to write serious music, so I spend 15 minutes now and then writing a popular song. Don't think that I despise Tin Pen Alley and popular music. I went on this 1933 model, St. Cecilia. I have great respect for popular music and get lots of fun doing it. Tin Pen Alley is a very interesting business. It's just like all the plays and jokes you've seen and heard about it and more too. You have to have an instinct for public taste and you have to be willing to gamble. Miss Suisse tucked her flame colored slippers under the folds of her pansy velvet hostess gown and went into a detailed and knowing exposition of how the radio is ruining the music trade and how it's silly to try and get a hit by copying a song that has gone gone over big and other aspects of the music trade. This clip, though written over a hundred years ago, reminds me of the conversation that we had with Dr. Jada Watson on the music industry charts and how radio often determines who is going to succeed in the music business. It's often less dependent on sales and more dependent on the choices of radio DJs and or the algorithm. So I'll link to that episode from last year in the show notes. In 1947, at the age of 38, Dana Suisse set off for Paris in pursuit of her lifelong dream of composing under the tutelage of Nadia Boulanger. Suisse was admitted through an interview and an introduction of a shared colleague. She spent three years, as she describes, in, quote, a creative straitjacket, end quote, learning counterpoint, harmony, arranging, composition, and more. During this period, she wrote canons and string quartets and learned orchestration. Suisse notes that she wrote and arranged primarily on instinct, and so her private lessons with Boulanger were a rigorous education into Western classical composing. However, it was noted that Dana Suisse was a prized student of Boulanger's, which earned her private lessons on holidays and into the late evenings. As Dana Suisse's career grew, she continued to spend time writing, composing, and orchestrating. With her sweet spot being writing between the genres of classical and jazz music. At the end of her career, her and her husband invested in an all Dana Suisse concert at Carnegie Hall. She rewrote and reorchestrated many of her famous works and included new arrangements of her infamous concerto in three rhythms, with which she made her Carnegie Hall debut many moons prior. The concert was given on December 11, 1974, and the proceeds went to the Musicians Union Emergency Relief Fund. 
Dana and her husband retired to the Caribbean, and after Edwin's passing in 1981, she returned to Manhattan. Dana passed away in the city she called home for most of her life on October 16, 1987. Dana Suisse was a legend of a composer, and to repeat the words of my friend Anna Lee, she was one of the greatest composers you never heard of. Don't forget, if you would like to support this podcast, one of the best things you can do is hit the like and subscribe buttons so that the podcast episodes download straight to your devices. Five-star ratings and written reviews really help our show get in front of new audiences. The subscriptions and ratings really matter to us and the sustainability of our show. And plus, it's free. Thanks so much for listening in. I hope you enjoy this new style of episode. As always, you can find me at oamusicstudios.ca and oamusicstudios on socials. I'll see you back here next week. I really hope you enjoyed learning about the composer Dana Suisse and are encouraged to listen to more of her music. To close, here is the refrain from This Changing World. This changing world.